So Einstein was half right. And here is the man to whom we owe this great revolution, special and general relativity. He was a great man. He was also a good man. Now you know his life, and I'm going into gossip, but this gossip is important for philosophy and then later for physics. We are going into a little gossip about Albert Einstein. He was very young when he had a friend, his age, Michele Besso. And Michele Besso helped him throughout his life to a degree, you know, he was his angel. He helped him get a job in the patent office. He helped him with his divorce. He helped him with his son, who was schizophrenic, and how to get, he should pay, uh, you know, for, for, for the child and for the wife and for the estrangement. He helped him, him with the formulation of special relativity and some 12, uh, 12 years later with general relativity. I wish everybody will have such a friend like that. Real, a real angel. He's not famous. Einstein is famous. And then Besso, when you read Einstein's paper on special relativity at 1905, there is only one acknowledgement. Not I am thankful to this professor and this professor. It didn't know any professor. I am thankful to Mr. M. Besso for many helpful comments. Look what a good friend. And then Besso, after studying, doing his PhD in physics, he turned into philosophy. And Einstein was mad at him. Why did you go to philosophy? You could be a very good physicist. And then Besso said, you know, I love special and general relativity. He loved them because he helped Einstein with their formulation, with his comments. But there is something missing. What's missing? What Absalom is now? He didn't know me. What, what, what I'm now talking about, the passage of time. Time is moving. Time is passing. And Einstein said, oh, here you go again. There is no irre irreversibility in the basic laws of physics. You have to accept the idea that subjective time, with its emphasis of the now, has no objective meaning. Yeah, I know it's important for you, but it's not real. It's only an illusion. All right, a few years have passed. Sorry, a, a few years seems to have passed because <laughs> they don't pass. And something happened which makes everybody understand that time is, what do you know, passing. I just got a letter from the son of Michele Besso. My father passed away. Einstein had only four weeks to live. He had aneurysm and he knew that his end is coming. And now you have to send your condolence to the young man. Michele has preceded me a little in leaving this strange world. This is not important for us who are convinced physicists. The distinction between past, present, future is only an illusion, however persistent. Promise me that you will never try to condole a person for the death <laughs> for the loss of a loved one with this silly argument. But what Einstein says, you know, we are convinced physicists. Uh, Besser was, was not, but we are convinced physicists. Your father is alive somewhere. He's he just not accessible to you. There is time, there are four dimensions, not only three, and in the fourth dimension, his uh, world line is still extended and he's still there. It is just, he's not accessible to this part of your world line. So this is what Einstein would say. You see, not irreversible. I would say that he lost his friend irreversibly, but he still does not believe in irreversibility. So here it is. We should think about the universe as a four dimensional. So I gave up two dimensions. So this is space, say length, uh, no, no width, no height. And this is time. So say uh, east and west and past and future. So Einstein says, yeah, these are the two world lines of me and Michele Besso. We were babies. We, we, we met each other, we were, uh, then we had a fight, we separated, and then we met again, and then he dropped dead, and then I'm going to drop dead. And it is only that his world line is a bit shorter than mine, four, four weeks. I shouldn't mourn about that. We had world lines, and the world lines are there. This is the view of time. If people think that I am, yeah, I don't say, come on, I'm not dead. I'm not really dead. I'm just, my world line is shorter than, than yours. Now, if we think, that uh, uh, th this is just a kind of philosophy. No, Einstein always was unhappy with this. And here are his words. Uh, uh, it is a matter of painful, but that this experience cannot be grasped by science seems to him, this is what Carnap says about Einstein, a matter of painful but inevitable resignation. They had, Einstein had uh, an argument with this uh, philosopher Carnap, and he said, we have to give it up. Look. Relativity theory works. It is so beautiful. So it demands giving up this passage of time. So let's accept it. 
And do we have to accept it? This is the question. But you have zillions of uh, selves, each of them existing in its own moment. Each of your selves has the memories, possesses the memory of the previous selves. So this is why you believe that you are the persons who were at, in bed this morning, because you have their memories. But they are still there. And the later your later selves will have your memory. It's complicated, but this is the, the view of relativity theory. So Hermann Weil suggested perhaps there is something like consciousness that crawls along our world lines, something which is not within the laws of physics. He tried to understand it. And then Penrose said uh, something very nice. How do I know that when I am talking to you, if this is indeed my consciousness that crawls along my world line, perhaps I, uh, my consciousness crawled faster than you or uh, slower than you. So now I'm looking at zombies and you don't have consciousness. And then he said, it's so insane that I, I don't want to consider it. But you, you now understand there is a problem. Physics works and it is based on logic. And logic tells you that time cannot pass, time cannot move. And then we still have this feeling that time is, does move, that we do have freedom of choice, that we can decide for ourselves and how can we reconcile them. I should mention only that uh, it is part of a larger problem, the problem of the error of time, that we, uh, uh, th which is still an open problem. Einstein said there is no irre irreversibility in the basic laws of physics, and he was correct, but there is irreversibility in our world. So here it is. If I have, say, a cold uh, glass of, uh, of juice, then if I leave it for a long time, it will become warmer because it will absorb heat from the environment. So the, this equilibrium, coming to equilibrium, means that entropy has increased. We will never see the things happening uh, in reverse. I will never see a lukewarm uh, glass becoming by itself cold or lukewarm glass of, of uh, coffee becoming hot. This is the second law of thermodynamics, and here is the problem. The interaction of every single molecule is completely time symmetric. If you run it by video forward and backwards, there is no difference. Just like there is no difference between uh, any um, physical interaction and its reflection in the mirror. The universe is completely indifferent to different directions of, of, of space. There is no universal up. In Australia, there is different up or on the, at the moon. There is no uh, universal north or south. There shouldn't be any universal future or past, and actually there is. When you, we look at macroscopic phenomena, there is an error of time, although this error of time is absent in the basic interactions. So Einstein was half right. So this is a problem of the thermodynamic error of time. Why is it that every place in the universe, when I look in the telescope, I see cups of coffee becoming cold by, by themselves and not, and not spontaneously becoming heated? There is the cosmological error of time that the universe is expanding, so it goes only in one direction. Can you derive the thermodynamic from the cosmological? Hawking tried, and then he, he admitted that he failed. There is the quantum error, there is the biological error. How are they related? This is another problem which is still open. And there is, of course, the question of freedom of choice. We believe that we have a freedom to choose to, to, uh, what we are doing, okay? Einstein, you know, he was not a poet, but at the age of 36, he wrote a poem. And the poem was dedicated to the thinker he loved most, Spinoza. Spinoza said, there is no freedom of choice. We don't have free will. It's only an illusion. If the falling stone could think, then the falling stone would think that it wants to fall. But we know that it falls not because it wants to fall, but because it has to fall. So I am doing what I think I want to do. I want to drink some juice. And then Spinoza would say, by science, by the laws of physics, once biology and neurophysiology are advanced enough, I will be, we shall be capable of predicting whatever you want to do. And then you will see that everything that you do and you think that you are doing it at your own choice, at, at your own free will, it is not like that. You are bound to do that. So suppose I want to prove that he's wrong, I go and bang my head at the wall. You see, I have free choice. No, Spinoza would say, I know about your childhood. I learned some neurophysiology. I know the state of your neurons. I know that you are such a, 
uh, an obstinate and, uh, you know, such a rebellious guy that every time that you hear something, you're going to do the opposite. So you banged your head in the wall, not because you have free will and you want that you want to prove it, but you, you had to do that. So we feel in a straight jacket and we feel that it has something to do with the freedom of choice. And Einstein wrote that beautiful poem in German, which has been translated also into to English, how he loved Spinoza, Spinoza, that great person. Although, and here's a paradox, Einstein believed in freedom, he believed in democracy, he believed, he fought for people's uh, right to do what they want, but deeply inside, he didn't believe that there is such a thing. So we have these two problems, the passage of time, which physics tells us the, the, that uh, it is an illusion. We have the errors of time, which we don't know to this day how, to, how they are related to one another, or is there a more basic master error of time for which we can uh, derive them, and the, the question whether I, when I decide to do something, I am freer to do that than the cannonball whose trajectory is strictly dictated by the laws of mechanics. So, quantum mechanics has been one revolution, and there is another revolution, even ma more major one, that of quantum mechanics, and now let's talk about quantum mechanics. So here's classical physics. In classical physics, when you shoot a cannonball, it can go only in one, uh, along one tra trajectory, and you can predict it, you can calculate it, if you ignore other things like clouds and, and air and, and so on. So much so, that if you shoot it backwards from the place where it fell, then where is it going to return? Just to the same place. So we have determinism and time symmetry with, uh, as two characteristics uh, of uh, classical physics. Things are radically different in quantum mechanics. When you send a particle, it goes in, in form of a wave and it has an actual uh, equal probabilities of ending up in several places and you can prove that this is not only that you don't know where the particle is. The particle itself does not know where it is. It can give rise to interference, just like a wave. Different parts of the wave can meet one another, cancel one another, strengthen one another. So in a very profound sense, when you shoot a quantum mechanical cannonball, then it spreads like a wave, real wave, which can give rise to interference. But at the end it says, no, kidding, I will just a single a single particle. That's the paradox of, 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 uh, of quantum mechanics, the problem of the wave function and collapse of the wave function and so on. So we also lose time symmetry because if eventually it ends up in one of these places and I shoot it backwards, I'm not going to get it falling to its origin. So quantum mechanics is neither deterministic, not, uh, not determin uh, neither deterministic nor time symmetric. Now, Quantum mechanics also have something important to say about time. And it says that what we thought about time, including Einstein, is wrong and uh, time is a richer concept than what we thought. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.